someone's salty. Yes. Hey. Why, hello oh, everybody. Welcome. Oh, I didn't get anything. Oh. Welcome to Theta Thursdays. Uh, tonight is a very special night. It is a... Uh, <laughs> It, ooh, I, I'm going to mention that in a second, but it is New Year's Eve, so Happy New Year's to the EU people, and for the US people, hey, we still got a couple hours to party. Uh, so today, <laughs> for our little background, uh, we have changed it to a live, not live, a was live <laughs> footage feed from Galaxier, who gave me this footage, of the Pappy Titans below getting rained down upon by Goon Swarm Titans from last night's fight. And yes, I kind of agree with Fat Rabbit here in the chat. They're not called Pappy anymore. They're called Trappy because they're trapped. Ah, uh, that's great. That's well, a good one. Let's let's do introductions. Uh, this is Mifune and obviously Don Rea here. We have some returning regulars of Docs and Greg ha uh, Haza Haza. We have a returning. Oh, actually, he would have been a guest if he had been on. Uh, Avon and then a uh, and Eric's here too from Push to Talk and then a very special guest of Jim Halscott of High Sex Shenanigans I believe Hello. and he's also the one of the runners slash moderators of the largest Eve Facebook group correct, correct. yes okay so Jim's gonna be here to hang out with us give us a neutral perspective somebody that wasn't involved at all and and as well as talk about what he does up in High Sex and other fun things that he does so. Uh, yeah, and if, if Mifuni looks rough and I sound rough, it's because it's been a rough day. <laughs> I'm a look, little tired. Look, streaming takes a lot out of you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Str streaming takes a lot out of you, especially when you're talking your mouth off. for th <laughs> th 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 Especially when you fall asleep and leave the stream running <laughs> look, for four look, extra hours. Look, look, Good job, buddy. The I gotta give a shout out, though really to like how excellent the INN coverage was and how that it kept a lot of the line members going when they were really tired. <laughs> yeah, totally. Myself, uh, when I was watching it yesterday, um, I was doing shit tons of spreadsheets and I was bored out of my mind doing it, but watching, well, listening slash watching the stream while I was doing that um, for the entire day, I watched the whole thing from pretty much start to finish and that was what, like 16 hours or something? So that kept me going all day while I was doing the work that I had oh. to do. So thank you very much for the stream yesterday. It was spot on. I believe the actual fight stream was 12 hours from start to downtime when things are actually fighting. Um, and I think we're going to just straight dive right into the fight, because uh, I know a lot of you here are wanting to hear uh, our view on it. You heard a lot of our views, three, at least three or four of us yesterday on stream, basically, you know, trying to be quote unquote neutral. I was never going to be neutral, uh, but just talking about the fight as it's happening. But now that we've had some time to look through, um, but let's hear from the people who weren't on stream. How? What did you think of the fight yesterday? Um, and did anything interesting happen to you? Or, but like, let's do the overall first impressions. I mean, I, I think in terms of the numbers and the fact that we're practically fighting against the whole of Norsec, even if it was very close to a draw in terms of ships that were destroyed on both sides. I think if we destroyed the same amount of ships, then that's basically a win against the rest of the game, because proportionally, it pretty much is. Yeah, that was... The numbers itself, so it started off about 300-something to 400-something, I believe, in Titans alone, and then obviously all the subcat fleets. And then as the night progressed, it got to 600 on each side. I don't think Pappy expected that. And the fact that we oh, controlled kept, the field at the end, right? They kept cycling the jammer like idiots, so we could just bring more in. Well, they needed to bring more in because they couldn't. They couldn't. They were trying to, you know, bring in their reinforcements. So people were like, yeah, I, I just got off work. I'm, I'm ready with my Titan. I'm going to jump in. And we're like, all right, we'll jump in too. We're going to pay attention to this. And um, I, I really don't know. Like, I would love to hear, and maybe we'll get Bunny on or something who can talk about their side. Because shout out to Bunny. He was in his car and played in his car for a while, driving down the road in a snowstorm. I mean, he, he pulled over, but 
<laughs> I gotta give a tip some props to him for even logging so in I, like I that. I have some props to give. Uh, I know Necro is watching tonight, and Necro, I'm not sure if you've heard, but the Requiem Eternal ex leader, his Titan was uh, fearlessly murdered in the bloodbath that was last night. Oh yeah, that was pretty good. That 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 was that's some pretty sweet right there. We murdered their I alliance didn't... and their titans. I didn't recognize a single name we killed, but everyone kept saying, "Oh, that's blah blah blah." All I'm like, "Okay, great. I'm gonna shoot them too." Um. So, Greg, initial. This is your first Titan fight as well, right? Yeah. Again, I was uh, I was in a, a, a rapid light missile serve shooting fighters, and uh, it was fun. And we uh, we deleted a lot of fighters, uh, but everybody's got a job to do in these fights. And yeah, I'm not a uh, I'm not a big uh, super capital slash titan kind of guy. So it was uh, everybody everybody pulled their weight, and everybody uh, had a had quite a quite a good time. And I'm, I'm not sure about a, a, a excellent yeah yeehaw kind of time, but you could tell by uh, by how how the comms were going and how how bright and, uh, and cheerful everyone was while they were being completely exhausted. It was, uh, it was definitely a win for us in the morale. And then, um, Avon, obviously you were on with me. Uh, Mifune obviously was on with me. Eric was on with me. Uh, Jim, uh, initial impressions from the completely uninvolved party. I mean, did you watch any of it or hear, or is it just all the stuff you heard about? You know, I, I watch pretty much everything, uh, and I've kind of got like a, a little bit of understanding from both sides of how things have gone, um, from obviously uh, in the Imperium side and uh, Pappy side as well. And um, I think really, in my honest opinion, uh, Pappy have kind of dug themselves into a hole, and they don't actually have a ladder right now to get out of it. Um, that's just kind of the way I'm seeing it, especially with how uh, goons right now are constantly um, keeping an eye on where they were logged off. Um, yeah, it's a bit bit of a problem for Pappy right now to uh, be able to come back from that. I think someone just did a count not too long ago. I believe there is 149 bubbles where their Titans logged off. <laughs> yeah, they, no more! They aren't so, going anywhere. So there is a question in the, the chat that I wanted to bring up. What stopped us from doing this at any other point in the war and this is why why did we finally pull the trigger well i believe the answer to that is because this was on an actual fair imperium keep star uh most of the time uh the fights throughout the war have not uh, well some while some of them a lot of them have taken place on keep stars the reason that this time that both sides committed was because the uh, imperium side we sniped the sino jammer before the uh, before the uh, keep star came out of ref therefore we had the ability to jump our capitals in before they cycled another jammer and throughout the fight uh, Pandemic Court, I believe it was, was in control of said jammer. And throughout the night, they went and they uh, they offlined their own jammer so that they could jump in reinforcements. And Which we, did, we took advantage of. We took advantage time. of and did the same thing. So people and are saying in chat, uh, they're, most of their Titans did not get out. They are logged off in the same spot along with most of their supers. They have used a lot of fuel and I... They are missing a lot of fighters in those supers at this point. We did a good job. And cap boosters. I know I went through about half of my pile of cap boosters. Now, clearly, half of my pile lasted for 12 hours. So, if you know, but if you've got some pilots that weren't good at cap management or maybe they didn't buy, I didn't have drugs the entire fight. They kept saying, take your drugs. And I had zero drugs in my, in my oh, ship. I know, right? I didn't know. It wasn't in the fit. Okay, blame Gennel. He's the one who makes all the fits. So I was just uh, like... Well, I, I have noticed on the kill boards today that the uh, Imperium have destroyed the Sino Jammer within uh, M2. Yep. Um, yes, so we have. I, I oh, we put up our own, I believe. We put up our own, but we can't online it because we don't have the iHub control yet. But it prevents them from putting one down. It does indeed. Good, good, good. good. So that is uh, a handicap that you guys no longer have, but as you were talking about resources, um, you were talking about like cap boosters and stuff. I'm going to talk about fuel very quickly for the Titans, uh, because mm -hmm. from I understand it, the uh, Doomsdays um, they require fuel to fire, 
And you guys on Saturday, I believe it's going to be for the next timer, you guys are going to be jumping in with um, fully, everything's going to be ready to go and you guys are going to be fully fueled uh, for the fight. But the offline, uh, sorry, yeah, the, the offline Titans right now from the Pappy side, they are not going to be as fueled as you guys are. So they're only going to be able to fire like a limited amount of times, uh, much more or less than you guys are. So you may even have uh, Titans that can no longer fire their D-Days at one point. Well, and th they may bring in, so like, uh, shout out to fucking G-Soul, the ballers that they are. Obviously, it was a t it was a fighter bloodbath. If you're watching Z-Kill, you saw fighter after fighter after fighter, both sides, back and forth, going, 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 going. So G-Soul, the heroes that they are, brought in truckloads of fighters for our capitals to dock up and refill on the fly as necessary. I actually didn't even have to dock up, Don. I was delivered fighters to my fleet hangar for me. As oh, soon as I even had my better. weapon timer done. They dropped them into my fleet hangar, and I was able to stay out in space and rearm fighters. So sh big shout yeah. out to them for that. That's work. Right. So that is one way that the Pappy side could restock on some of those items. But they're, you know, you run the risk of uh, because our ships are tethered so those little haulers can stay tethered the entire time they don't break invul and in opening up fleet hangers right so I... uh their side will lose invul because they're down below with no building down there so they run the risk of that we if we have some long range uh dreadnoughts or a really nice uh subcap fleet nearby they could take out the reinforcement uh supplies if they try to bring some I agree, and I think really maybe the Imperium should kind of focus on that as like some sort of counter, just in case uh, Pappy just try, uh, decides to try and do something like that. Is um, you know get those dreads on there, get them ranged, and make sure that if any sort of reinforcements come in to try and uh, resupply uh, their guys who are going to be logging in later on, um, you guys can just take them out straight away and just completely deny them the opportunity to uh, get get the fuel in and uh, and get the resources that they need to carry on. Yeah, and it's so not necessarily about isotopes guys yes i my avatar and yes i was in an avatar yesterday everyone knows now i didn't want to say yesterday but i'm in an avatar um the it's not about the fuel because i jumped in with 1.5 million topes i could dd all day i was fine with that what i'm talking about are the fighters for the supers because they're they're low if our supers were low their supers were low like it was a back and forth battle on the fighters so we're talking about these big, heavy things that you can only take one set at a time in a hoarder, I think. So they're going to have to find ways. And maybe they'll use a super to bring out more fighters to each other. That's always possible. Uh, I'm sure they'll find a way to make it work. But they do run the risk of having to wait or try to put fighters in a fleet hangar during 10% tie dye, which yesterday, granted, wasn't that bad. Still kind of ass. <laughs> I, right. I believe it was yesterday during the stream I had a screenshot that I displayed of a fellow fleet member that was trying to unload his light fighters and put in space superiority fighters. And the server was so bugged out, his space superiority fighters were still loading into the uh into the into the tube while the light fighters were still in that same tube. So he launched them, and it said that he had light fighters launched, even though it was really his space superiority fighters. Can you, can you drag down Ryak? He yeah. wants to come hang out. Now, for the people just joining us in the chat, today we're going to talk about, just because I know I haven't got to talk about all you guys, we're talking about the fight, and then we're also going to give Jim plenty of time to talk about whatever he wants to talk about, because he is our special guest today. So, But, um, uh, Ryak, Caleb, initial impressions on the fight? Any anything that stood out to you that was like, oh my god! I was thinking through the whole thing. I so know you I, were. <laughs> so I got into my I got into my dread like initially, and it was uh, short range. So I was like, okay, cool. And then like went AFK for like an hour or so. Came back. It was long range, and I didn't have the complete long range uh, dread fit. So I didn't have a signal amplifier in my low slot. So when I got on grid, I couldn't target anything because it was all too far away. And I was just like, well, this sucks. Some of the people in stream heard I desynced at the last hour, hour and a half. I was so desynced. I would lock somebody and then I would try to lock them for like 10 minutes. And by the time I locked them, they were already dead five to 10 minutes prior. They, they weren't actually in space. My ship was like, fuck you. I'm blocking this ship. 
So, so I kind of I I missed out on my last cycle of Doomsday because I couldn't lock anybody to shoot. In my uh, in my fighters, but before my sleeping incident where I went to bed when I meant to take a nap and I ended up going to bed instead, uh, with my fighters, my fighters kept bouncing off the other friendly ships. And like I was sitting, my my capital ships were sitting uh, right on the top of the keep star, right, like right near the tippy top, and they're flowing all the way down, and they bump into the keep star model, and they just kept bumping on the keep star model over and over again until they overflowed to one side or the other. Good job, Mifune. You know you can manually tell them where to go, right? Yes, okay. I know. I told them to orbit the the Titan that we were targeting. And it goes to orbit and just <sighs> bounced off of garbage. And it know, took me like it took an hour and a half just for my fighters to actually like not orbit my super. I I do want to challenge chat right now because um, this is something I'm proud of and I've been spewing it like crazy. But try to find who got on the most Titan kill mills because right now I'm winning at 46. So find out who got which individual pilot. Not. C combined pilots here. Individual pilot got the most kill mills for a Titan. Because I'm at 46. I'm sure someone's higher than me. But I want to know. And everyone that I can think of I, has always been at like in the 30s. Were you running around just tagging them and slapping them on the back or something? I told you my TD wouldn't work, so I just started like using my guns on everything that was called. I heard that Dawn's offering 10 billion isk to whoever beats her. I heard Dawn is offering up a, a free Titan for the next fight. I heard she was offering up a Palatine Keepstar, right? Whoa, yeah, whoa, yeah, whoa, it's whoa, Palatine whoa. Keepstar. T Tuzzy isn't around. We can't talk about that unless Tuzzy's here. <laughs> so, um, so one thing that was like happened yesterday is some people were kind of questioning, like wanting to start. You could hear like in the fleet comms, we were all kind of wondering, like, we're losing twenty Titans. An hour on average. That was kind of the average throughout the night. And it ended up, and I said we could get to 250. We did get to 250. Um, we It was 230 to 224. Imperium winning. So we lost 224. Or sorry, not 224. 124, sorry. And they lost 130. We discovered that at least four to six NC dot Titan pilots dropped Corp to avoid showing up on the kill mills. And we had to go hunt down their kill mills and add them to the to the spread to the sheets manually. Ah, NC dot never ceases to amaze me. I can't believe you'd do that in the <laughs> middle of a fucking Titan fight. You have the like shame or audacity to be like, I'm a drop corp right now. Like, really? Even really? If, even if you're trying to save your kill board. Save your employment history. Like, no one wants a long game. There should be a history. thing that, like, if you are in a corp, like, the first time you get shot, then that's what the kill mail shows. Like, it shouldn't be something like that. I personally don't have the names. The information was announced pretty recently. But um, if I can find the names, we will we will provide I believe them. one sure. of them... One of them was the first Erebus that yeah, died. The Erebus that died. Uh, the one that started with someone, a T or whatever. The, the first someone guy assumed, died. Someone assumed that he got kicked. But I'm pretty sure that was what he was doing. Titanic Wasn't the death. first tit Titanic death. Yeah. Titanic death. That's the one. Yeah. He was one of them. He People thought he got kicked. But I heard he actually dropped. Uh, Pittsburgh dropped. Pittsburgh dropped. I heard about that didn't too. Didn't die. Am I tired? Absolutely. I am. <laughs> Pittsburgh I'm... didn't die though, so I don't think that counts. But um it like yeah, so if we find the names, we'll be happy to post them probably somewhere on Reddit to tell NC Die how they need to stop being such giant pussies about things. Details here. So and shame name and shame. You know. So if you guys find them, you know, that's great. Like I'm too tired to like fact check anything so like i could be spewing bullshit who knows i don't know but i'm gonna go with what i know so uh what else so that happened which was crazy uh but a lot of people in fleet comms were wanting to start talking about the future implications of this fight and what we learned in this fight so originally in x47 and btech r it took the same amount of hours to kill you know 20 to 75 titans somewhere in there right sometimes 40 b 
because they were so tanky. Well, back in March, and CCP made the patch with all the resistance changes, and everyone laughed at Imperium for telling us, dock out the supers, dock out the titans, they're going to die too easily, we won't be able to save you, blah, blah, blah. So, um, like, we're, you know, now we've seen kind of the what's really going to happen in this titan fight. Like, we all thought it was going to be a bloodbath, but I did not expect it to be basically like a tie-dyed fight, like a battleship fight almost. Well, what I think is uh, my first guess was that the fight, once uh, once we had A's come in and, and A's was kind of giving us those paper numbers and they, they kind of looked even throughout the whole thing, the thing that popped into my mind was mutually assured destruction. Just like for the whole fight, it was going to be paper thin close to each other no matter what. So, um, Yvonne was watching, I mean, or even Caleb, like, what do you think this changes about the landscape of Eve? Now that we know for a fact how a Titan fight's gonna go. I don't think it honestly changes much of anything off that one fight, but I think that Saturday could be interesting because they really open themselves up to, like, a defeat in detail as those guys log in, and if we completely end up decimating that fleet or even taking out a good portion of it, it opens up a lot of strategic options to even go, as we jokingly said, do things like ref T5Z and push back a lot more than we could have before. Well, also, like, replacing these. Like, I know that we're going to search through the couch cushions and find holes where we need to find them, or people already have spare holes. Like, I have another one. I know Zungin lost two Erebuses in the middle of the fight. Uh, Magic Queen from Pandemic Horde lost two Erebi in the fight. Uh, I know Jay... I think Jay lost one on one of his accounts, and he's already replacing it. Um... And also, by the way, if you bought an Erebus, you made the wrong decision. So. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think the Imperium really needs to focus now on making sure they've got pilots and not just a few, but at least 50, maybe to 100 pilots, maybe even people standing by with extra ships nearby. Um, and the ships they want to be using are going to be the interdictors just so they can bubble the absolute hell out of where all of those ships were logged off yesterday. Well, the fun thing is is that Already done. there's a thing called anchorable bubbles, which I'm not sure how much null sec things you've been doing or have ever done. Um, yeah, you can do those as well, but I believe those can be ex they can be blown up, right? And they're quite yes, easy they can. Well, well, so the the dictor bubbles can as well. But there's Dictors, there's Hictors, and there's Anchor Bubbles already out there on the undock, just keeping it bubble fucked. Good, good. Make sure that that is just constantly kept like that, and make sure that basically the, the idea is you guys want to make sure that everything that is currently offline at that you know particular location, nothing leaves, everything dies on this Saturday. Part as far as I know, they've already caught in the fax, a carrier, and maybe a couple other things that have logged back in against instructions too. I've been watching the guildboards. I've seen a few things die in the last like few hours. Which is it's quite... been we've seen like a carrier, a, a dreadnought, and a fax have logged in. We've seen some titan pods log in to try and escape the bubbles to get obliterated, which is funny. see. Um, so I want to uh... point that I want to point that out in the the chat real quick, uh, Mister Hazel. Uh, 1337 I uh, so basically the thing is is that what happened was these uh, these capitals they technically by the game's mechanics DC'd and they DC'd because of the downtime so the way that DC mechanic works is that when you log back into the game the game automatically will warp you and return you to the previous position you were in before you DC'd so that those uh that that weird warp trick that we saw like six seven months ago where they warped like past the bubbles or whatever that doesn't apply because they don't have that control over that warp. Well, that and they don't, as we saw with our own thing. When you come back from DC, you're not all coming back from one direction. It's multiple different directions, so there's no way to put bubbles in line with it. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, is that these Pappy members, they're going to log back in and the first thing they're going to see is their Titan mid-warp and 
that warp, when that warp ends, they're going to be at the edge of this giant bubble fuck. Oh, it was beautiful yesterday when we all logged in because we were baller. So we all logged in and just hundreds of titans just coming from every angle on this cube star all landing about the same time. It was pretty fucking gorgeous yesterday. Not gonna lie. I was a little nervous warping around. I was just like, no one, no subcat fleet's gonna catch me, right? So <laughs> right? the thing is, if they have a way to cheese that, that's kind of an exploit and you know, bannable, kind of like how CCP told Pandemic Horde to stop dropping the cans last night to purposefully lag out the server. You know, they're... they're oh, they're... they did? Yeah, didn't you? It was from right at the get-go of the fight. They were dropping cans all over the uh, Sino Jammer in an attempt to cause the server to lag more than it was. I don't remember that, nor do I remember CCP saying anything about that. That was, was that must have, that was before was the stream started then because we didn't stream the Sado jammers getting punched down. Yeah, they did that at the start of the fight. It was uh, it was a good try, but uh, didn't work out so well for you, did it? So, um, you don't know. Okay, so see, okay, so I could have sworn CCP devs. Maybe it's just me being tired, but I could have sworn CCP devs were in the chat. And like saying stuff about it, but um. Anyway, the thing was is that um, the the like you can't sit there and say I'm purposefully going to use an exploit to prevent the way that I'm warping with DC mechanics. I don't think that, unfortunately, I don't think there's much like choice about it. You can't like, because most you can't of the time, do anything. If you log if you log in after being DC'd. By the time that you leave the character selection screen, you are already mid-warp. So I don't know what you could do, considering that when you're mid-warp, it disables everything. And as far as I understand, uh, uh, DC mechanics, they won't get trapped at the edge of the bubble. They'll be thrown right back into the pile they were. And the yeah. bubbles are there to prevent them from jumping out and repositioning. See, exactly. You can't stop that initial warp. And when they do warp, they're going to land in bubbles. Uh, there may be a fight Saturday. Uh, that is actually a question that I wanted to talk about is um, on Saturday, it's the whole timer. Usually you don't fight over a whole timer, but Pappy's also stuck in bubbles, potentially, unless something crazy happens, uh, below a, a still active Keepstar that can still shoot and point and give us tether. Um. Oof. I mean, and we always have the option of when it gets to a certain percentage on hull to de-aggress and leave after taking a pound of flesh. Um, do we think there is going to be a fight on Saturday? I bloody well hope so. I have to go back to work on uh, on Wednesday and I definitely want to see something insane happen before that happens. I I I kind of hope there's a fight. I did get my Titan out to go restock it and fill up on drugs that I desperately, desperately needed. I just, they just kept calling for him like I don't have any guys I'm sorry um, what was the, the other thing that was uh, that? so the meta I feel like is I just wonder if Pappy is willing to do this again in 1DQ or if 1DQ is going to be basically strictly um, sub capitals at this point well, the thing is, it's not just again, it's again, and again, and again. It's many again. I don't doubt that they'd be willing to do it, potentially, but I'm just wondering, you know, is, is every group going to be there? Are they all committed to it? Because NC and Test both got hit hard yesterday. They were the two number one alliances, to besides Goonswarm, because, like, obviously... <laughs> Obviously, everyone was shooting us. Um, Test and NC were the two that got hit the hardest, I think, with 50 to 60 Titans each eliminated from their respective groups. And then there was like one or two or 20 from like P Horde and stuff like that. Um, do you I think? Asked, I asked before the stream, um, I asked leadership and uh, about our reserves of Titans. And apparently uh, we have lots. That was the exact number that was given to me. 
Well, ah, very good. Yes. So random line thing. member asked about Titan numbers, and then they'll just say it. <laughs> they'll just to say it, right? <laughs> so I believe this is from Piggles, but I, 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 I don't know for a hundred percent sure. But I, uh, I have a little ping here that was sent to me by a uh, Cryo, uh, and I believe it's Villy. I'm not hundred percent sure. The the screenshot is kind of cropped, but I, I'm gonna be uh, reading this one out here, and I want the 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 stream chat to listen very very closely to the wording of this ping okay great fucking work everyone look at a slight victory for us fighting on an enemy keep star most of our titans lost will be replaced before saturday as as we have a large titan cache and goons do not keyword most of the titans lost yeah, but they apparently have but why not all that is, why well, not all the titans lost on saturday it is it is a question of if test is going to srp nc titans and pure titans or are they going to uh just sell them the holes and are they going to sell them at the prices they built them at or are they going to sell them at the current prices for titan holes yeah, Villy said, and that's something we brought up last night. Villy said they had a hundred titans in cash. Well, last night just ate up a good chunk of it potentially, if not all of it. So I, that's a question, and we're gonna have to see what happens um, in the coming days. Now I know that if we don't replace our holes within two days, dear Lord, Villy and, and and company are going to be sitting there jerking it off, wondering why didn't we replace our holes as fast as they did. And, uh, and I, I am apparently, I am apparently re receiving word right now from an unnamed assailant that the uh, test uh, Titan cache is only hulls. It's only the Titan hulls. Well, that's how ours is too. Like ours, that's like, normal. That that's kind of normal. But like, I don't know. Yesterday when Das MP lost his Vanquisher, people gave him his Mons back. You know. That was let's shout out to that brave pilot that gave back some of uh, Stampede's mods back. Thank you, Mister Brave Pilot. I don't know who you are, but you were very kind, and uh, uh, it was uh, it was pretty sweet to see that. And Dunk put out a nice tweet as well. I saw Dunk out there in his Titan. He's still probably stuck down there in his Titan, and um, uh, he said that you know thank you to everybody that was involved. He was just kind, you know, I, I gotta say, I, you know, I'm sorry that I'm trying to burn your home down brave, but you know, you picked really bad bedfellows. So, well, it, you should probably rethink who you're with. Cause uh, I guarantee test would not have any class. Can I just, um, mm -hmm. let, let's just hypothetically think about this for the, for a moment. So obviously test has logged out and they you know uh, pappy rather have logged all of their all of their supers out and everything and they they've just decided just to log out but hypothetically if they didn't what would have been the better um choice for them to it choice for them to do so would it been would it have been better for them to stick to what they've currently done where they've logged everything off at, at when downtime hit or would it have been better for them to have logged in and carried on the fight I think they were tired, and I think they were happy with the number they got. They already got the objective, and they've already, you know, the numbers were um, still even. I think the, they were starting to run out of fighters. Now, were fighters a huge deal in the fight? Eh, I don't, I mean, we killed five titans with our fighters, so I don't know what they did with theirs. But maybe just killed reds. I think fighters were... A huge deal in terms of combat effectiveness during the fight, but I don't think it's a huge deal as to who lost more fighters afterwards. Yeah, I I don't know what really was the best call. I would have been fine with I actually I would say thank you for just logging off only because I needed to sleep and I was exhausted. So that's okay, but I, I also would have been fine fighting some more. So either way. See, I, I think personally it was a, a big mistake for them just to log out and not log back in because now, you know, they're in this position where they're somewhat trapped. Um, yeah, what if somebody who was there yet last night just doesn't show up Saturday? 
because well, I don't want yeah, to deal that's with a it. point, yeah. Maybe they've got like something happened in real life or something and they just can't attend. Um, yeah, that, that's a possibility as well. They can't get out, and so now they've got to hope and wait till they can scout out that all the bubbles are gone and that everything's cleared. So that pilot could be out for for a week or more. I'm sure that's only going to be a couple people, but that's still possible. Maybe so. that's something that the Imperium can look at, is go through the logs um, maybe about 20 minutes before the server went down and have a look at how how much log information they've got on uh, on the enemy fleet and try and determine how many people there were there. Get a big list of all of the um, characters that were, were on grid at the time and then uh, cross-reference that with what's going to happen on Saturday and then see if there's any people who are missing and then maybe they can continue to camp that area even after the, the fight on Saturday because they may, you know, these people who don't show up on that particular day at that particular time may try and log in a day, maybe a week later and maybe there's the possibility just to be able to grab some uh, free kills on those guys who are logging in so i'm gonna give a question i think caleb will have the most info on this one and you jim um how is this particular fight going to affect the high sec or low sec or the balances of power um whether it be maybe this fight or this fight and the next fight's coming up how do you think that's going to affect kind of the rest of the game as a whole in the areas that you're in because obviously this isn't a direct impact but this is going to change some prices I like step one of step one of the culling, right? The 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 big culling of the proliferation of titans. I don't know uh, if I'm not mistaken. I think we've only cut into something like maybe ten percent uh, of what's actually available out there. Um, I, I know that some might think that uh, I'm a little bit bonkers for saying that, but I'm pretty sure that the caches are uh, in the realm of thousand to fifteen hundred on both sides and we've only cut into what 150 maybe on each side uh, in the war in total so we're only 10 percent in of course that's going to have an impact but it's not really going to shift anything massively yet so i'm still holding on to see uh, if we're going to see more of this or if this was a, a, a fluke and uh, the tail is going to be between the legs of the snake and uh, yeah, we're going to go back to normal. I, I, I don't know. I, I think they, they felt fatigued until today, right? And I was actually expecting them to just uh, poke the bear and do ding-dong dash and then fuck off, right? And Jim, uh, you had something? Yeah, I'm quite excited, really, to see um, how the real-life medium, you know, PC Gamer, IGN, uh, but also, um, I mean, if I remember correctly, it was... Peter Carr actually had a BBC post. They actually, the BBC themselves actually made a, a, a post about that specifically, a very short piece. Um, so the real life media is number one, and also how CCP are going to do this and then use it to uh, their advantage to advertise EVE Online to the, the rest of the gaming communities around the world. Um, so we may see a increase of new people coming into the game to try the game out, which for me personally is really good uh, because I run um, a number of different uh, high set groups um, which are related to bringing brand new people into the game uh, and then we we basically you know use them to do my bidding they don't know that but they do <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um but I, I you know i'm quite excited to see how many more people we can get into some of the uh, organizations that i currently run uh because we may be able to bolster our numbers and because if we're if we're going to have more people coming in i'm going to be making more money long term so and then we'll be for me. and then once they're done with you we'll take them Yes, absolutely. For those that don't know, Jim, what is it that uh, that you do? What's your yeah? We uh, forte we can get into that now. Ah, oh, God, that is a complicated thing to talk about. So, essentially, I first started out um, a few years ago with something called the Thieves Guild, um, which a lot of people who may, may have heard about this before. Um, so, I started basically. Uh, I, I saw a video uh, a while ago. It was called. Um, Grand Theft Citadel. If you were to go to YouTube now and have a look for that, I'm pretty sure the video still exists. But um, some players... Pull your basically... mic away from your mouth, by the way, a little bit. You're, you're popping. Oh, okay. Sorry. Interrupted. Sorry. Those, those I, you know what? I'm going to... I'd rather smell good, town good. Industry, Don. 
you know, I know I have a pop filter, but he's like, hello, how are you going? Like, yeah, like, just uh, hold sorry, me a little sorry, bit. Sorry. You're good. I, I, you I, go. I had one of my friends on the Facebook who was telling me that it was uh, not loud enough. So that's why I put it nearer to my mouth, but never mind. No, anyway, you're fine. Go ahead. So, um, Essentially, um, yeah, so I saw that this group had uh, found an unanchored Citadel, and they stole it. And at the time, Citadels were brand new to the game. It was 2016, 2017. So I think they got like over 2 billion isk or something for that. So it was pretty damn good at the time. Uh, so I decided to look into the me mechanics, into how Citadels are anchored, how they are unanchored, and then how I could uh, industrialize Citadel theft from looking at you know which corporations are unanchoring them um and everything else so i pretty much just went all around high sec uh initially scouting every single structure and just looking for the giant big sign outside saying unanchoring and i made a number of different accounts um which are all omega at the time and i basically just camped them and that's how i started but eventually you know things got more complicated uh and i decided to do to try other methods which actually worked out easier for me um and a lot of them don't even require me to be uh, online camping structures. Uh, these days, I've got assets in every structure in high sec, or at least 99% of them, except the ones which are currently being anchored at the moment, which I have a good idea where they are. And when they're anchored, I'll go and drop something in it. But when something on anchors or when something explodes, I get a notification on my character. So I know where it is. Uh, and I've got characters which are in those systems and they're currently logged off. So as soon as I get a ping, I basically just uh, cross-reference the mail that I've got from the asset safety notification to my spreadsheet of all of my characters and all the locations. And I just log in the appropriate character and uh, go and steal it. Sometimes the owners are there, sometimes they're not. Um, but yeah, sometimes I get it, sometimes I don't. I probably get them now maybe about 50-50, 50% of the time, but I make a considerable amount of money. I think on average, maybe between 10 to 20 bill a week, uh, and most of the time I'm offline or I'm just watching Netflix or doing my own thing and just listening for notifications. And that's pretty much how it started. But these days I've kind of like moved on to other things where I've now got a group of people, uh, which I've called the organization. Um, that's pretty much how we're, what we're known internally, but also externally to other groups. Um, and we run a think tank. And this think tank is uh, looking at the new mechanics which are coming into the game, looking at the old mechanics that we know very well. Or th most of us in the think tank know the mechanics extremely well. And we try to mix the old mechanics and the new mechanics together to make things which most people have never really seen before or found things which just don't really exist. Um, so one of the things we recently, well, I won't say recently, it's, it's been on my mind for a while to try it out, but it did work is if you got a, if you found a, um, unidentified wormhole beacon in the overview, if you warp over to it, most of the time it's covered by drifters. And if you get within 10 kilometers of the drifters, they will target you and shoot you and they'll blow your shit up pretty damn quickly. But if you get within your targeting range and you just target them and shoot them, you can warp off, but the drifters will follow you. I think a lot of people know about these mechanics. They will follow you across the system. So I decided to set up a bookmark next to a AFK orca this one time a few a few months back. Aww. Yes, no. you see where this is no, going? No, no, I no. Did not do it that was, to a high step. But it, it, it gets better because we currently have plans to do this to incursion runners at some point in the future. Oh, <laughs> so, no. Yeah, we are we are we are pretty fucking evil. Um <laughs> so these are the things that we think of and you know, dragging of diamond rats to shoot a building. <laughs> pretty much. I mean so, some no, of the things we I think can... of it doesn't work, but some things do. And then then we we, we document all of our findings on the ideas that we've had. If it works, great, you know, excellent. We'll like document it really, really well. Uh, if it doesn't work, then we we take what we've learned and then we try and apply that to other things. So with the, the mechanics recently with the ESS in NullSec, um, I think Bjorn B figured this out pretty quickly and I was quite impressed. But very quickly, as soon as I saw the dev blog that came up with this, I looked and thought, you know what? I'm going to get those um, filaments that drop you into NullSec, a random NullSec system. Um, so you get those filaments. Uh, you get a filament that takes you into Tr Triglavian space and then another filament that takes you back to HiSec. And that's how I've been jumping into NullSec, stealing from a load of ESSs and then eventually 
being able to escape really quickly back into Triglavian space and then just chilling out for 15 minutes till the timer goes down and then jumping back into uh, into high sec again. Um, but yeah, so we've, Jim, we've got a number two, of things that we work on. Two things. So number one, if you remember back to last year during Blackout when the Drifters started shooting all of our keep stars and shit, I blame you for that now. <laughs> all right you're, you're the reason ccp got that idea uh and then number two um the other thing was is that uh with the filaments we actually had a guy yesterday i forget his twitch name so extremely apologize but we had a guy yesterday right you know how there's that one null sec filament that you take it and it shoves you into a system that's like really pvp active so he was using a, yeah yeah he was using the, a the noise or whatever yeah 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 so he was using a bunch of those trying to get into delve with the whole fight going on and he was giving us updates in the twitch chat and uh his first one dropped him in immensia his second one dropped him in esoteria his third one dropped him in oasa and he, and it's like i think it was like four hours into the fight and he's like i'm on my 10th filament and still can't get into delve and i was i was dying yeah, the the filaments take you anywhere, so it's like you know, it's it's luck essentially if you yeah. get into Delve. No, but I, he, I, was, I jumped, he was. I, trying I jumped to do the Delve out of one. I jumped was... into Delve a few weeks ago, and I, I was just like, uh, the first thing I said in local was, "Ew, I'm in Delve," and like, there's about six people who were like, "Fuck you!" And <laughs> well, the, uh... welcome to Delve. Welcome to Delve, Delve, bitch. That's pretty much how it is. We've literally had someone like. Phil, like we were watching on stream he's like not delve not delve not delve and it's 1dq he's like fuck oh that's beautiful, that's beautiful. <laughs> it's like i guess i'll just go hide somewhere for an like you can get out of delve pr actually relatively safely if we're bored honestly if you don't like you can totally drop by we're very no. friendly we have cookies and and milk yeah so we, we've got an operation that's beginning on the 12th of January that may be interesting to a few people who know what's going on on the 12th of January with a few changing, a few changes to the game. Um, all structures are going to be required to have a quantum core. I'm not going to go into the specifics of this, but let's just say with the information that I've got with every uh, structure in the game and with a large majority of uh, knowledge in regards to who blows up structures in high sec, the uh, amount of theft that can be done with that is uh, pretty intense. Um, and I'm quite happy to kind of like share this, uh, 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 this level of information because the large majority of people, well, I, I would be very surprised if anybody's got the amount of information that I do that goes on in high sec at the moment. Um, that would kind of surprise me if people have got the, uh, the, the spreadsheets that I do that I've been putting together over the last few weeks. So with the core mechanics, um, if you have a grandfathered in structure, uh, the only thing you lose is tether and other station services, but the building still has its normal timers. I believe so. I'm not entirely sure. I think I've that's, heard some conflict. That's how it's before. worded. Uh, okay, that's, I might have to. We don't have that. to core a single structure till they start shooting it. Yeah, I may so, have to um, go and like shoot a few structures then, and like you know force them to put in a core. Uh, can you put that up, please? I'm yeah, sure. yeah, I'm putting it up. I'm putting it <laughs> up. Don't worry. Just so to break have... into the fun talk, uh, we have uh, a, a mini true slash INN employee who is, is quick the... on the fly to make things for us. He's in the hospital right now, I think, again, uh, bored out of his mind. So he's been making. He was making stuff all last night, and he's just made this, and we're gonna put it up hopefully. I'm Bloody gonna cryo. shove it. I'm gonna shove it right in the minute. Cryo, we fucking love this man. This man makes the best propaganda in the quickest time. This man will post propaganda to Reddit faster than Tappy can even think of something clever to shove on there. He's. Uh, I, I so, think, was Cryo the one that made golden retriever bees? Yes, he did. Oh, yeah. all right. So here we go. We have our own. Propaganda. Here goes the uh, right, new, yeah. the brand new shit. That is the greatest thing. I love cryo. I love cryo. <laughs> Hi guys, this is uh, Traffy. The Trapped Alliance, please ignore. Uh, yes, please do ignore them. Listen, listen, you can pet them, but you can't feed them, alright? If you feed them, they'll start begging too much. 
Yeah, don't, don't feed them fuel. Only feed them like little pieces of like random stuff that you don't care about. But no fuel. One piece no, of ammo. No drone, nothing. Yeah, like maybe yeah, yeah. Anti- antimatter small or something like. Oh, that. <laughs> that is a that is a point to bring up. Uh, so a couple of our titans uh, did report that they started running out of certain types of ammo. Uh, I didn't go through even one set of crystals, so like I was fine. No, leave it up, fool. No one cares you know on who's talking. Uh, okay, you want me to leave it out? I'll leave it out. Just leave it up for a while. It's funny. <laughs> um, it is pretty damn funny. But uh, that is a question actually for circling back down to the Titans that are stuck. Um, now, I'm sure the avatars down there are fine because crystals take forever to go through. But some of them may or may not have brought the right amount of ammo. And so they're going to have to start sharing. I know the Leviathans didn't have a problem with missiles because it took forever for their missiles to go off. But... Uh, I think some of the Ragnaroks or the Erebuses might have problems with charges for, like, the proper ammo. That's something I didn't even, like, we didn't talk about earlier, but, like, ammo is actually potentially a problem if you can't restock properly. Like, How big is extra large ammo, anyway? I'm, I'm probably going to yeah. assume it takes so, up hold on. Well, like, in real life, it's like... <laughs> It's it's pretty quick, large in real life. A quick correction here. It was actually Froggy Storm that made the Golden Retriever be not Cryo. But we still love you, Cryo. We, much love. Get well soon, buddy. It's true. All the Airbuses are dead, so they may not have to worry about ammo. But. But the. Uh, uh, like the um, stuff for the Avatar is pretty small. Like, because the crystals are, you know, they're extra large crystals, but they still don't take up that much room. And they don't burn out that quickly. Um, but the uh, the missiles take up, a de- even missiles for a, a, like, torpedoes or cruise missiles still take up actually a decent amount of room in a regular subcap. So I can only imagine, it, you know, do they use extra large cruises or something on the levees? I don't know how levees are fit. I'm not, I don't, if it's not a laser beam, I probably don't know much about it. Oh, hey, thank, thank you. you. Subs. Oh, that's a lot of subs. Thank you for gifting all those subs to the beautiful people. That means yeah, a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, so the question is here with Trappy uh, trapped in M2. What, uh, what is the Imperium going to offer them if they maybe, you know, got suckered into Villy and Piggle's stupid fucking endeavor? And now they're having second thoughts and they just want their Titan back. Ooh. Do you think there could be some uh, dark uh, meetings in seedy corners? I'm sure it's Mittens. happening as we speak. Mittens meeting with goblins, being like, yo, I'll let you guys go if you leave Tess to die. I like where this is going. I, oh. I I do like where this is going because things have been running thin. Fraternity, uh, if I'm not mistaken, people were joking about Fraternity showing up uh, about, what, 2, 3 in the morning right before I went to sleep? And if, it's my understanding they never fucking showed up, right? They had a couple Fret, out there, but no, they didn't have a lot that I saw. Fret didn't really fucking show up. Like, okay. Fret was supposed to be, the, the, they did make it? Okay. Okay, that must have happened after I fell asleep then. I don't think they had many out there because I don't remember seeing that many of them, but yeah. there were some out there for sure. But then again, Frat may just not have that many down there Look. because they I, I've seen numbers and I was shocked at the numbers that I saw. Frat so. made it, but went after Ranger Regiment. OK. There were there were enough of them to kill a few Ranger Regiment Titans, but there weren't a lot. I, I'm checking out some of my links here on my other monitor, and it looks like there was only maybe. 30, 40 people from frat, as I can see. Yeah, there. I didn't. I didn't notice many on any of the killboards. But I do know that uh, they were losing supers out in their ratting space during the fight. Yes, um, they did. Large quaif. Uh, the vanquisher was lost by actually my ex shadow CEO, uh, Da Stampede, in his character Grincia March, Mars, Mars, whatever, March. Marcia. <laughs> Whatever. And um, his vanquisher went down, as I said, like a college girl at a party. Like, oh. it was fast. Whoa. Like, <laughs> let me tell you, I had him locked up on my apostle to try and rep him, and there was no repping. It was just 
alpha. They must have put at least 40 to 50 doomsdays into him to take him out. And he was why stamp didn't, is, why didn't the Imperium thundering hero. So why didn't the Imperium shoot at Pappy Faction oh, Titans? Because uh Thank I you for we, that segue. We uh, we did. Yeah, so we did. Number one, we did. Number two, they were like pussies. They were they did jump out like pussies, a lot of them. Um so the uh them. all of them. <laughs> they had a Vanquisher and they had two Molochs and I don't remember another one out there. I think they had at least three to four faction titans. Uh, uh, we so shot one Moloch who left, which makes sense. Don't get me wrong here. It, if you can get out and waste our damage, that makes sense. That's fine. We did it. They did it. We'd tether. We'd jump out. They'd warp away or jump out. Like, that's a valid tactic. More power fucking to you if you could get it done. But the other ones that weren't even targeted fucking bailed. Because I don't remember seeing them on the grid at the end of the fight. So, and Villy, uh, Mr. Villy did not bring the, what is the crown jewel or something like that? The champion's jewel, it's called. The champion's jewel. He didn't bring his Komodo for this one. No. This must not have been fancy enough for the champion's no. jewel. And the, um, I, I believe uh, one of the, the guys' main question was, why didn't we primary the faction titans over the regular titans? Because it wasn't worth it. That's literally just the ISK war. We didn't care about the ISK war. The whole point was to eliminate as many titans as possible in the shortest amount of period. It wasn't about, oh my god, I, I'm going to kill the Pappy faction titan and, and get like an extra blank on, on the on Z-Kill. No. It meant taking out their doomsdays so that they couldn't doomsday us. More. Yeah. I think it was all about, that's what everyone was mostly focusing on, was removing damage from the field. Airby have the best uh, phenom. Now, obviously, we didn't get rid of all of them, but you know, if we get lucky with the one that was boosting, maybe they would be without a boost for a certain amount of time. They could help us future. Um, they also have really good damage application to, against um, our titans because we are a mixed fleet of armor and shield. Tappy was um, mostly, uh, I believe, they were mostly shield, but had some armor down there for those who don't have both. But, um, yeah, like the faction Titans, I'm calling you out, Pittsburgh. You ran away like a little girl. Why don't you? We still had a van. We had another vanquisher jump in mid fight during a reinforcement amount. And our two Molochs were still on grid at the end of the fight. Cause we had still had three faction Titans on grid. We don't have that many. Cause like, it's kind of like a waste of money, but still it was kind of like, what? Oh, we did have one Moloch, but we didn't have tackle on him. We had plenty, but there was one Moloch that we had, but we didn't have any tackle on him. And this man entered armor in his Moloch, and he was gone. There's a regular Titan there, don't get me wrong here, but he got die test out in his Moloch. I saw him there for, he was there for a long time, but once he saw Rowan getting targeted in the Moloch, uh, he was like, peace, bitch, because I don't remember seeing him the rest of the fight. He now, I could be back. wrong. I could be wrong, but I do not remember seeing any of them after that. So, you know, I'm just saying here. If someone wants to correct me, I'm more than happy to get corrected. So, um, wow, we got it's, Cryo, you distracted us so much with the good art. It's such so, a good, it's such a good one. I really love that. It's hilarious. Now, well, I, I hope you I hope you don't mind, but I've stolen it and posted it on the Facebook group for you guys. Oh, so. That is fine. Just make sure you put out that, you know, well, actually, people probably can guess that it's Imperium propaganda. Oh, so. absolutely. I mean, it's fucking funny. And that actually reminds me, I did listen to the town hall from this week from Test, uh, and they and Billy admitted that their uh, propaganda game was low, and that uh, he wanted people to step it up because their propaganda game was not as enticing or engaging. Now he tried to put it as that they tell the truth and we spin. Whatever. Okay. Well, I think uh, I think it was Brisk that said this on the meta show that the definition of spinning is in Eve Online is taking the truth 
and turning it and wording it in such a way that it's in favor for your side of the fight while still staying true to the facts. So in essence, all spin is still fact. Just to, just to play devil's advocate, what, if any, positives can uh, Tappy take out of this? Or, sorry, Trappy take out of this? The one uh, positive they got is that they refed another Keepstar in Delph. But they haven't destroyed it yet. So, if they log in for the fight, for the final timer, for, on the whole timer, and if they fail, and they, you know, they get the asses handed to them, and that structure, if that Keepstar eventually just reps back altogether... They've, they've, they, yeah, it's a huge loss to Trappy altogether. So, so, Crab, I'm gonna let you, or it's not Crab. <laughs> so, Jim, I'm gonna let you know here. It takes only, uh, five or six Titans to get that into damage minimum. And to cap it out, it's like 12. They could literally just, like, leave a couple shooting it while the rest of us are having a fight. And it would affect nothing about the fight. So, that building's gonna die. Unless, yeah, it does unless die. they decide to leave. If they leave, then it would live. But if they want it to die, it's very easy to make it. Like killing keep stars is and Fortizar's stuff is actually not that hard if you know the numbers and what you minimum need to do, and you can make it happen. They got the numbers on the field, it's not a problem. I expect it to die, but what are they gonna pay for it? So uh, I I believe Brisk is, is still watching in the chat. Can Brisk put the final Titan death numbers from yesterday? As we have had the uh, fifth message in a in a row now, where I've seen, but Pappy killed more Titans. It than, was uh, Goons did. Um, I it believe. was one th- one thirty to one twenty four. They lost one thirty. We lost one twenty four. I still can't get the over f- the numbers. Like the the amount that was destroyed. I, I was insane. watching it live, and it was like fucking crazy. I was like, oh my god, did we just lose twenty Titans in an hour? Oh my god. <laughs> We could go through, like, the, you know, at the t- the start of the fight, it was like 350, 400 on each side, roughly, right? When doing it, you could go through how much, how many? Like, well, 247 it, it, titans total, I think it was. I've heard from CCP 248 titans. I saw yeah. a, a post on their Facebook thing earlier. Yeah, but some of the kills that. still didn't post until way later, so I don't yeah. know if they have all of the kill mills. Yet. We don't have kill mills of half the keep stars that have died in this game. I do know no. that it was over three times that of B Yeah, It was, and it's it, it was crazy that it was triple B R. I I think that that is just because when I started Eve, I started Eve in 2016, right? And when I started Eve, my there there are two things that got me interested in this game, and that was my father who plays Eve and is slowly getting back into it, mind you. So maybe having him on the show some point in the future. But uh, he got me into so Eve. Many questions for him. And the <laughs> and the story of B dash R. And I told myself that one day somehow. I will be in a battle just like BTEC are. And here we are last night. And I think that is a lot of people on both sides that started this game in between 2015 and 2020 and told themselves, I want to be in a fight like B-R. I want to make history. And that's exactly what we did last night. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, Eve Online, uh, directly from the CCP, um, over 23 trillion isks in ships destroyed and 248 titans lay broken upon the battlefield of M2 TAC XFE. That was from uh, Vizorian. How many titans? Uh, 248. So uh, a good segue here For now. is the... Uh, a good segue here is the... Um, the dread bomb. Uh, the, the failed dread bomb <laughs> test. So believe <laughs> it or not... Funny. I actually have a uh, a nice little video here that was given to me by the man who made it himself, Galaxier. Uh, and he posted this to Reddit. And if we bear with me for just one second here, I'm going to shove it up on the stream for everybody to watch. Uh, because it is such a beautiful video to see. Video uh, posted on the forums? Yeah, he, he posted it on the forums and then he posted it to Reddit. Leave anything CCP says at face value. Just say you have not learned. 
So, um, so watch the video. Uh, it's it's pretty cool. Now I'm gonna let no, y'all know. I'm gonna shove like, it up on the stream. The if you weren't if you weren't watching last night's stream at all or when this happened, uh, my Titan was within like twenty to thirty of them of these dread dreads coming in. I was I was like, oh no! And then once I saw what was happening to the dreads, I was pretty sure. Like I was like, oh god, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be hurting here soon. All right, you but, guys, um, you guys ready to see this dread bomb? I'm gonna transition off here so people can watch the dread yeah, bomb. Yeah, that'll be fine. That was That was uh that was uh, not cryo um galaxy sorry I'm still tired. Yes, for for those that um were there on comms last night, uh, our beloved Elo Knight told everyone to hold your fight because initially as soon as the dreads came in, all the supers were like, oh, things to kill, yay! But he's like, hold your fighters, watch the show, and then <laughs> they all just started going, and it was it was pretty beautiful to watch, watch it all. Now I was from now the thing is on my screen I didn't see a single thing. I just saw the dreads come in and then they all just like disappeared like 10 minutes later. It wasn't until 45 minutes later when I zoomed in on my ship to like look at something else that all the animations started going off. <laughs> That's when I knew I should have probably relogged at that point. You had animations going during that fight? You're crazy. Yeah. Bitch, I, I don't know how to turn anything off. I just turned down settings. So um, I do want to transition a little bit because my original plan for tonight, besides the fight, was to talk about our year in Eve. And we've got about 35 minutes left before Mifune has to turn into a pumpkin. So uh, I don't to turn let's pumpkin. talk I about... Go. I gotta go pick up my parents from the party there <laughs> and bring them That's home. what I mean. So let's talk about uh, people's like big thing in Eve that they really liked or some of the changes that happened this year or something impactful. Um, and what they kind of hope is going to come up in the next year. So uh, we'll start at the top. Avon, favorite thing this year or what you're looking forward to next year? My favorite thing this year has been... I haven't liked much of the changes they've done, but my favorite thing in this year was them anchoring uh, Keepstar in T5Z, providing me content next door in Nullsec. And what I'm looking forward to next year is more of this. Okay. Caleb? Are you still awake? Well, I'm just wait. I'm just waiting for them to uh, fix the ecosystem. Do Do you have any like impacts from this year that that were a big standout for you, or just all about the eco of them fucking everything up? Well, I I did have a lot of fun seeing initiative doing initiative things and feeding the wood chipper. That was uh, really entertaining. Uh, I think I also mentioned it on uh, the our little year in review. And then, of course, uh, I, I am still going to shout out that the stuff that Brisk has brought to the INN crew and, and the content that's coming out of the streams is just massively entertaining. I thought he had, like, topped the game when he did Pantsless Interview. But when he then brought on Curious George, 
Mm-hmm. I, it's like that's the most fun I've had in years. The, all the found Frank stuff, yeah. I gotta say, Brisk has been a delight to step up the entertainment value. Um, that's why INN had twenty five hundred people watching the fight yesterday, and all the other streams only had. And we had both Pappy and non-Pappy people watching. It was like, you know, back and forth people, you know, quipping with us, challenging us, you know, um, supporting us. And it was a great time. Uh, He's brought those uh, filibuster skills to EVE Online. It's like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's something that he's able to fill that space. So, um, Docs, what's your favorite thing or most impactful thing this year? That you can think um, of, and then what do you look forward uh, to next year? Last night's fight was pretty fun, and I, uh, I guess I'll look forward to be able to uh, buy a Titan very soon. That'll and be good. obviously, I'm looking forward to winning. And then, before, but I think we all are. So. And then have the uh, Titan die immediately in the next big Titan fight because it's a Ragnarok. <sighs> You'll be fine. You're also still keying up, by the way. Oh, I must have. It, yeah. It's stuck. Okay. Here, well. uh, let's see if we can right click. There we go. And it'll do that. And he's still hot keying. Okay. Just just leave the <laughs> channel and come back and we'll. Oh, no, there we go. We're good. Okay. Yeah. Greg? Well, Favorite thing is... this year or things that you want to bring up? This is my first year of actually seriously playing this game. Like I tried twice. I tried first in 2011 and then again in 2016. And I've got to say like the social dynamic of this shitty game is the only reason I continue to play. It's all about the people and I've landed thankfully on the right side. I've landed on the side of the Imperium and the friends that I've met here are second to none. I continue, uh, I want to continue in the new year if we don't, uh, you know, I'll die of the COVIDs to, uh, to, to keep doing this kind of stuff, to keep uh, shooting the enemy in the face. And uh, just, you know, it's, it's been so much fun. And I, I thank you guys all so very, very much. Jim? So I really love the new mechanics for the ESS that have come out. Um, and, of course, the post-Triglavian changes after the Triglavians took the, um, I think it was 27 systems in HiSec and they made their own like region and took those systems off the, the gate network. Um, I really love that from CCB. I think that's a fantastic thing that they've done. Um, things have become more difficult, uh, especially with trade between Cheetah and Amar. One hell of a lot of people who live in HiSec have been complaining about that, including myself, because I had a, a bit of an incident recently where I had to move over 400 tunes from uh, Kaldavi space to Amar and Minmatar space. So that took me about two and a half weeks to do that, but I did it. Um, I got through it. But I do love the ESS and what uh, CCP have done with that. And in my opinion, I would change one thing and they should make it so that no one in the system gets a notification that somebody is hacking the ESS. They should be able to see it at the top left where it's like this person is like taking the money, but there should be no notification. So then people like myself can sneak in, we, we can grab it and we can get out before anybody else really knows what's going on. Um, and I think really those have been, uh, those are my two biggest things that i've loved so far about this year 2020 and what do you look forward to next year or what do you hope happens next year Uh, i don't know i'm not going to talk about that because that's like opsec sort of stuff but there is one thing which was on a recent dev blog and it says quote um add new personal deployables both to allow more control of your immediate surroundings and to unlock brand new meta opportunities ccp posted the other day and i have no idea what that's about but i'm really interested in what's going to happen with that and then uh mifune what's been your favorite thing this year or change this year and then what do you hope for next year i think my favorite change that ccp has made this year has probably been god the sino changes as much as a pain in the ass they were uh and even though they were in the middle of of that that three month period we referred to as god awful hell for this game, I I still feel like those Sino changes was the one good out of the bad. Um, I think that was a really really good change uh, in the end, and it's made things a lot more interesting with Eve. 
um what i hope for next year uh that ccp dev blog about the ecosystem update and about how the nerfs are basically over or almost over please ccp give me ways to make more isk please <laughs> You if have you want... plenty of ways to make isk. No, I want, want to be something... able to sit in, in something and go rat and make more than 10 million a tick. That's if you what want I more want. Ways, if you want more ways to make money, PM me. I'm, I'm sure I'll give you some really good ideas. <laughs> if it's high sec incursions or stealing shit in a high sec. No, no, no. no. Mifune, regardless of what you want to do, Jim over here can definitely give you some good advice. Thanks, man. I we'll appreciate put that, that. We'll put that to the test. You're both British. So, <laughs> um, so for me, my favorite thing this year was getting to start Theta Thursday off of a uh, kind of a joke idea, and everyone just kept saying yes. So we just kept doing it. We've had to learn along the way, and we've had to uh, we've had some good shows. We've had some bad shows or mediocre shows. But I feel like we have provided some content for people on Thursdays to unwind or unpackage what's gone on in the week. And I've gotten to have a good time getting to know everybody. Uh, so I appreciate you all. And I, I look forward to next year doing more shows. Um, I don't know if we'll continue after the war with shows as much, just because I don't know what the content's going to be like, what will be there to talk about. But I'm excited to see what happens. And then uh, the other thing that I want to, that I, absolutely loved this year was just all my theta peeps and my logi peeps you all made my year you were there for me through a lot of different stuff and uh even through all of the emotional turmoil i'm a very emotional person when it comes to um my security i guess in this war and everyone's been comforting and helpful and and i look forward to whatever eve holds for us next year so just remember whatever the changes are if they are negative or positive don't rage quit just adapt the the strongest eve player adapts to the changes and they overcome them and that doesn't necessarily mean that they adapt their gameplay to continue with the the sort of like eve career that they've got but they change their eve career into something different or maybe they completely change from like being uh, one end of the polar end to to being something completely different and it's being versatile and having the flexibility to do that because the amount of people that have quit recently because of the changes to mining or ratting and something is is silly when they could do yeah. other things that make just as much money or sometimes even more i can definitely agree there i uh i used to super rat for example and uh i was not gonna lie, I was pretty pissed when that became a lot less viable, but I found other ways to make even more money. Kind of leaning towards the industrial side, but other things as well. And there's always stuff to do. You know, for me, um, I I'm mine. Everyone knows I'm mine. I'm in charge of mining, unofficially. Uh, <laughs> Like, I love mining because it's, it's for me, it's like a hunting thing. Like, I get joy out of finding the good stuff and, like, collecting and hoarding it all up like a little dragon, holding everything in and then getting my money for it. And I feel really good about it. I don't like to build. I just like to mine. But, so just, um, just Just to clarify, you said you were a little dragon, right? Little dragon sitting on my hoard. We, we, we need someone to, like, make some sort of uh, picture for that now, like, drawn or something. Like, <laughs> a little dragon. <laughs> so um uh i so the mining changes have hit me hard i owned a lot of moons that's what i did you know i didn't have a big workful fleet but like that's how i made all my money was mining and that's what i love to do in the game still to this day but i've had to as you said come up with an option i've made a, a business that if you're in goons you know what my business is but i've made a business and it's kept me afloat throughout the war with the the what i do and um it just kind of kind of like Theta Thursday where it just kind of came out of us talking about it and joking around. It's like, hey, maybe I can make this work and I've found a way to make it work. So, you know, if you're out there and you don't know what to do with this game, like just find what you'd like to do for fun and then see if you can make money off of it, even if it's a little bit. 
yeah, I can't agree more. Totally. So, uh, so that I wanted to make sure we hit that tonight because it is obviously New Year's Eve. Tomorrow is the start. Some of you have already started your new year. Woo! You know, all of our, our Euros and, and Chinese and uh, just, China just time zone to, uh, and stuff. Just need to let you guys know. So we've had a plague of uh, moths in Japan. Uh, and they spit acid at everybody. So we thought 2020 was bad. Um, 2021 is worse. And they follow the light. So when the light comes up where you are, you're going to have moths everywhere that spit acid at you. So just be careful. Like LSD? Oh, no. Acid? no, no, no. This is like that murder <laughs> hornet. No, no, no. This is like that mor- murder hornet shit that came in earlier this year. And, and it's like, I'm hearing all this shit of like, you know, the, the memes on r slash memes of like, you know, it hits midnight on January first, and COVID just kind of, you know, Thanos snaps its way out of out of the universe. <laughs> but now all this shit, you're telling me we're gonna get moths now? They're, I'm gonna see the, the headline tomorrow on CNN: Killer moths hit the United States. Oh, so moths. Um, it, at night for a couple years, when I was living with, you know, when I was in high school with my parents, uh, we would see this huge moth in the back or something some big huge thing in the backyard eating from the flowers and uh we finally caught it one day and it was a huge moth but it would fly like a hummingbird and it looked like a hummingbird well funny story it's called hummingbird moth there are three different species of hummingbird moths but um look out for those they're super cool they're really cute but it was really interesting to catch one of those so anytime i think of moths i think of that or even like the giant cecropia moth Yes, I'm still in the same outfit with my Wonder Woman. We got to take that down. Wonder Woman, the <laughs> new Wonder Woman movie sucked. Like the new, the new Wonder Woman sucked. If oh, anybody, that's I mean, why we need. That's why we need the cat version. I, have I would disagree. I, I, I thought, I thought the Wonder Woman movie was okay. I'm sorry. It was like, it was like, eh, eh, eh. eh. I mean, it's not the best movie I've ever seen. What was that? Uh, it was like, Mifuni's outfit. <laughs> <laughs> you get to see Linda Carter's boobs? No. Nah. Do you? Linda Carter was like the first Wonder Woman like back in the 70s or whatever. You would know. Yeah. We uh, we almost forgot to ask uh, ask Jim uh, a couple of questions. Yeah, so oh, okay. Oh wait, we're we're kind of at the the free reign. We talked about the the fight, and I'm sure there's plenty more we could talk about. But you know, end of the year, we talked about our end of the year things. So go ahead, ask Jim questions. Oh shit! So Jim, uh, what is your favorite type of sandwich, and how do you cut it? Oh damn, I'm quite basic. I, I, I'll just have uh, white bread with like uh-huh. ham, cheese, and loads of ketchup and mustard. And just uh, and will you slice you know, it or will you eat I, it like will you just like pick it up and eat on, it or will you slice you ask it? Another question. Uh, uh, I thought uh, that was about to be a very good answer until you said ketchup and mustard. Yeah, I what agree. Is wrong with ketchup and ketchup and mustard, but not on a like, cold ham sandwich. With yeah, 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 ketchup's for well, hot also, sandwiches only. Also, also, this this will just ruin you right because we do it in japan and it's quite a common thing in the convenience stores they sell a variety of food including raw ham and i went out with um, i had a friend come to visit at one point a few months ago and uh, we went out to a concert and on the way back at about half one in the morning um he need, really needed coffee so we went to the convenience store um and uh, i was hungry i thought i'll just get some uh, bacon so I got some raw bacon from the thing and just ate it there and then. And he's looking at me like, what the fuck are you doing eating raw bacon? It's perfect. You know, it's spot on. Yeah. You, you guys. You know, to, people to get eat. cysts from eating raw pork, right? I know, right? So don't do that. In Japan, though, it's fine because it's. Like, no. Not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, no, no. I've seen a woman who's x-ray. She was complaining about pain and across her entire body. She had 300 cysts from parasites from eating raw pork. I also was a bit don't do like, that. I, hold on, hold on. I also was like really curious about this, so I kind of googled into it because I did uh, my degree in microbiology, so I know about that sort of thing. So that's why I was curious. But I looked into it, and apparently it's fine because they, it's it's somewhat raw, but I'm not entirely sure what they do to it. But it's fine. Like in Japan, it's all. Do you think they cure it at all? They um, I, no, I, I, they. Not, 100%, but um because all of it's in japanese when i was doing a load of it and my japanese is okay but it's not like fluent fluent so i was kind of like semi-translating it while i was reading this stuff 
But um, you know, it was it was apparently they, they put it in sushi, so it's fine. Um, and I've done it, and I've had no problems for a while, so everything's good. Well, uh, you know, parasites to the brain and and stuff like that take a while. I have a degree in zoology, so I had to learn about <laughs> a lot of the horrors of like parasites and like the vampire, the one that'll like burrow into your calf muscle. Well, in, if, like, if, if I die, if I die from some parasite, you can have all of my stuff. In uh, oh my yeah. response, but That's parasites what? take a while them can like tapeworms can take a while to grow especially when they get really big and like i think the longest was like 70 feet for a tapeworm pretty which is uh, that's pretty ridiculous pretty that was ridiculous. John Holmes i know was the longest random animal facts here you go i've got it <laughs> um so the other so the other thing was is how do you cut the sandwich honestly i probably wouldn't cut it i'll just eat it like an animal you that's normal that is normal leave yeah, I'm, me I'm, no i, I i'm you i'm a guy i i live alone i can't be <laughs> fucked like you cut your sandwich yeah, horizontally there's no, there's into no triangles point cutting it. I mean, I could why would you it cut triangles? it horizontally into okay, triangles are listen, you at a fucking 10 year old's birthday party when you cut your sandwich <laughs> there is something very satisfying about the squished part of the bread where the blade hits you know is cutting the bread and the bread squishes down so it gets thin and then uh it gets cold from being in a lunchbox for a couple hours and it stays oh squished God. i you like that part okay for a couple oh, hours. when i went to school okay it's how my mom made my sandwiches and i always liked that part <laughs> it's really cute don but i think you know you, you've put way too much thought into this do you not like have anything else going on in life because honestly i i'm busy as fuck like i i can never really find much time to myself this is a uh, um, a question a we've had many set many episodes to talk about that's I, like, usually the uh the uh test of like who what kind of person are you so you're like villy villy doesn't cut his sandwich and oh, um cool. <laughs> that's not a silly good thing um question. and then the are you doing the shower one well, I was just gonna say, like, how do you shower when you shower? Like, do you do you start at the bottom and and work your way up, or do you start at the top and work your way down, or do you, like, do you start somewhere in the middle? In the middle. I'm not getting paid enough for this. I usually brush my teeth in the shower because it's faster. What? Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll jump in and just like brush my teeth while I'm in the shower. <laughs> Uh, and, and then I'll just start on the body and like work the way down, you know. I have to get like really deep into the crevices there, like with the finger and the scraping with the nail. No, I'm totally joking. Okay, here's another good question about showers. Do you have a shower curtain or one of those like glass door, door things? I have neither. Is your I whole room just like because well, you're in Japan, so you got you got some. Yeah, the whole shit. room is gonna be. Yeah, the, oh, the, right, whole, the whole right. room is like a, it's a, it's a basically like a wet room. Um, oh right, okay. What Caleb? Can... It's just a small question uh, because this this question that you've been asking every guest uh, since forever. <laughs> um, so there's this thing. What if I eat Scandinavian open sandwiches, which basically means I am eating it with a knife and fork, like a steak. How does that apply? So Second, an open, open face if... roast beef? Well, you have to cut that because the gravy makes it impossible to like, and the potatoes and stuff make it impossible to pick up an open face sandwich. It's not it's, really sandwich. Then it's not it's not diagonal and and and, and it's and it's not straight. So that's fine. So... I cut mine into quarters if I get the chance. So okay. Se second second uh, question is: What if I am bathing and someone else is washing me? Does How? Where do you want them to start? Apply? Yeah, where what, do you want them to start? What What if I'm not going to ask them, but going to let them make up their mind themselves? Then you get. It sounds like a good time either way. It sounds like some sort of like Fantasy. domination <laughs> thing. Like, I don't know. Or well, I, I don't friendly think. Eve meet, right? A very friendly Eve meet. I mean, Helmar uh, did get naked in someone's hot, or not naked, but stripped down to his skivvies in someone's hot tub in Finland. So. I'm, I'm quite concerned about my safety when uh, you know FanFest opens up again. I'm quite worried. <laughs> so this is kind of what this is more of the theta comes, which I'm glad we get to near the end of the, at the end of the show. You know, get to uh, bring back a little bit of a taste of goons form. I think Mittens have made an instructional video about uh, goon meats. I think it's called Caligula or something. 
Is that All like a serious that... one, or is it like a joke? I know, I know we got a 20-minute a showering lesson from Boat on how to shower <laughs> and properly scrub <laughs> Yourself. I remember that one. It took. Okay. I was like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, he it took, took 20, twenty minutes. Twenty minutes, and he just sat there going, explaining was, every step. It probably of takes the way. twenty minutes in the shower as well. Woof! A shower. I can, I can shower in like you. two, five minutes, something like that. So, um, do it so in two minutes. I I take like five to ten minute showers at the most. Yeah, usually be like between two and five minutes. I, I, I try to big, just like get in there, get clean, get out. My big focus is just washing my hair, like. Uh, so what? Uh, what Eve celebrity is your uh, is your man crush? Well, for me, um, mm, that's a difficult question. Probably the space pope because I'm a good friends with Charles. Yeah, I, I love Charles. He's a cool guy. We just got him out of our space finally. And then the war oh, started. That, that was rude, but it was good because the war started and they probably would have been collateral damage. We were forethought here, forethought, you know? I believe there was a diplomatic incident on that particular day that you guys, uh, I think like somebody in Six Empire like shot one of the goons. I don't know. I'm not entirely sure what happened that day. They own like one system in MTAC S, way the fuck up there, the but fuck a stand of Delve here. That like we you know so they weren't really bothering anybody but you know we let them be there for their RP reasons or whatever and then uh, <laughs> they were there for like three years so they have their time. Oh, I know, I know. I've got a character inside them. They don't know that, but I do. Now they do. Oh, but, but no, they, they do now. Yeah. But they don't know who it is, and that's the that's the important part. There's the, probably gonna I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get a couple of messages now, being like, who the fuck is it? I, I guarantee that. It's going to be like, uh, we need to make everybody in our alliance talk on comms, please. Thank you. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. I, uh, I was, a long time ago, long before I played Eve, I was in an Arma 3 group. And for anyone that's played Arma 3, you know how hardcore these guys can be. And I was one of the, the few people in the group that didn't have a mic when I was uh, 11 or 12. And so um, what ended up happening was there was a running joke in the group to uh, help me afford a microphone. It was, they, they, they were like, we're going to set up a GoFundMe and get this guy a, a microphone so that he can actually talk. And I never spoke to anybody. Um, like I talked to them like by typing and whatnot, but I never actually like spoke or anything. So there used to be a running gag there to go out and buy me a microphone. And eventually they did it. And they actually sent me a microphone. Aww. Did you ever so, use it? Did I Wait, ever use it? I used it for a grinch. <laughs> yeah, he will not shut up ever since. It's okay, no, Mifini, I love not. you. Hey, Even if Tommy least... likes to pick on you. Whoa, 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 whoa. Just to confirm. You call just that picking confirm. on? <laughs> yeah, no, trust me, it could be a lot worse. I know Kumi. He could just, like, never, like... You know, you just gotta, like, earn your way into his heart. Kumi's a very nice, funny guy, but also, like... He has a personality that people don't realize, and it's pretty funny. <laughs> so you just, just gotta worm your way into his heart. Just to confirm, you, at the ages of 11, 12, 13, when you were playing Armour, you sent random people on the internet your address so they could send you this microphone. It's pretty shady, dude. Believe it or not, that, that was the fact. That was the fact. And was it was 11. Does he I think was... he knew better? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I kind of did know better, but I really wanted that damn microphone, so... <laughs> details um oh god so man crush uh you said the pope i don't want my mind's blanking it's tired and you know it's okay i know it, it's been a very long 24 hours <laughs> <since today. laughs> i will hopefully question. sleep like a baby are you, are you gay for jay or hard for harley I recently came Think across carefully. some structures in Highsec that were named that. I'm guessing they're part of you guys. I don't know. Um, so, Jay, they're, I, they're both FCs of the Imperium. And the, the joke okay. is, who are you more gay for? Are you gay for Jay Amazingness? Or is your dick hard for Hartley? I'm definitely gay for Jay. That's the classic answer. Not everyone can take... Some people really like John yelling at them. So, you know. Okay, Caleb. 
I'm adding that to my list. I have no, I have gay. I have gay good. for Jay. No, no, no. Dox have, will not approve. I, he gets, he gets I have jealous. gay for Jay, hard for Hartley, jerk for Merc, anal for Asher, and now Dawn, down on Dawn. Oh my god! Oh my god! <sighs> if you if you send me his um if you send me his uh, character name, I'll make a really long, beautiful mail to him asking for his hand in marriage. He'll never read it, but <laughs> Jay Amazing. It's literally just Jay, the one word, J A Y, and then Amazingness. Uh, okay, cool. I got it. So send a story or something. It'd be great. I'll tell him to look out for it. <laughs> so there is another. Oh, oh, okay. Here's a question we just came up pretty recently. But if you had the ability to poach, steal, pick up, borrow for a day, anybody in EVE FC wise or, or maybe Logi person or whatever person that might be important to you, who would you want to like grab? Do you have a person? Do you? Do you mean like, I, I, bringing them into the alliance, or bringing them in their corp to like work with them, or have them for like you know to do stuff with uh, throughout the you know Eve and stuff like that? Eve only guys, by the way. So like that you know, is... like, if I could keep Elo Knight, I know we're not Elo's going to probably bail once like the war is over, only because like he's a free bird. He doesn't he goes where the wind takes him. But like I would want to keep Elo Knight. That's I want to have Suwas come over to Goons. So there you go. Like that. It would have to be, and I know he he lost a titan yesterday, and I haven't yet sent my condolences on the alt that he knows me on. But uh, Jason Kuzin, who does a lot of ganking near Uidama sort of area, but he was in the fight yesterday and he lost his titan. Ah, <laughs> uh, of course you would. Uh, you would know Jason. <laughs> of course I know Jason. I just love the fact that he's able to multibot that amount. Of oh, he's in chat. Is he? He's in chat. Is he really? Oh, he's oh, right he there. Is. Ah, he is. Hello, Jason. Yeah, he's a cool guy. Um, he lost he, two titans. He, he lost two. Damn, damn, that's painful. Uh, I know. I knew he lost one because I saw it when I was scrolling through the kill boards earlier. But um, yeah, he's a cool guy, and uh, I just find it incredibly impressive how he's able to multi box all of his gankers at the same time to take down freighters solo. I I can't do that. I mean, I'm pretty good at multi boxing, but that is on another level. I have no idea how he does it, but it's it's godly. He's like he is on another level, way above than most people. He's he's very impressive guy. So, yeah, like, that's a big telling point for, like, who kind of who some people are like, who do you want around you? Because I know Bunny was like, oh, I've already got all the people that I want, which you may have. But honestly, Pittsburgh's salty attitude. I don't know if it was worth it, buddy. So he is the saltiest winner ever. He is so he is like that ex-girlfriend that's just like, I want to see everything burn. I'm going to take the kids. You're never going to see them. I don't even want the kids, but you can't have them. Like, that's the attitude I'm getting. Right I, now. I agree. Sad. I agree with Goomba. If I could snatch something, I would snatch Brave. Brave to the Imperium. I mean... We seen, offered it seen. to him and they didn't believe us! You, they could have been with us! Like, you, like Brave. I, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly saying this. No spin, nothing. Brave. You've seen what Test has done. Okay, they never paid you your TTT money. Okay, and, and they, they've done so much other shit to you. You're a meat shield. Come join goons. It's honestly better for you on this side anyway. Also, goons have more fun. Yeah, and then, and then uh, what, what's, the, what's the quote from uh, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean? There, there's no harm in joining the winning side, right? Oh, let's talk about that. Oh, before we go, I do want to throw some hashtag big shade. Oh. Okay, so y'all remember when Desons left like a month ago, two months, a month, two months ago, whatever it was, right? The big betrayal Desons that didn't leave. Okay, the directors betrayed us, and then the rest of the member corps, the rest of the member corps, no, that wasn't are in you on talking it. Of DYS? Okay, you're right. Dysfunctionals. I don't wait. <laughs> Shut up. Dysfunctionals. You're right. Dysfunctionals. Had a big fissure, they split, some of them left and got blacklisted because they were dirty spies, and some, you know, stayed in goons and went to different goon corps. So, dysfunctionals. They went to join uh, Lords of World Alliance, who has now lost five corps in a month. And these aren't like alt corps or single man corps, like they lost 165 man corps. They are fail cascading hard and i find it 
fucking hilarious. And I cannot wait till they fold into fraternity slash pandemic cord. So, you know, it's just like, uh, coming up Millhouse here. And uh, yesterday, and I, so, like, I didn't know how I felt about it, but I just, I'm really angry about all that because I felt very betrayed by a few of the members that I, you know, knew and then they did what they did. Um, you know, I felt very betrayed by it. And uh, I just kind of, <laughs> it's like, I can't believe you did that. Um, they were bug. They have been trying to poach a lot of us. I know Greg got messaged a lot yesterday, and I've been messaged a couple times trying to steal us over because goons are gonna lose, so we need to be on a winning side. Right, Greg? Yeah, it's it's interesting and in, uh, people's thought process when they realize that we're we're not. Uh, again, not the rotting pumpkin that uh, that's easily kicked in, but we have a a fucking cinder block in the middle of that pumpkin, and and they hurt their toe when they try to kick it. You know, like there the reason why I play with goods is because I like a lot of the people I play with. Not every single person, obviously, but a lot of them I do. You know, there's always going to be that cousin you don't like, but they're part of your family anyway, so. You know, you still do you still do what you do to take care of them because they are still family. Uh, Especially if that cousin's hot, right? Wait, what? <laughs> wait, wait. It says a loud shit. Sweet home Alabama. Alabama. <laughs> I guess backwater Canada could be similar, right? I live in the Golden Horseshoe. Mm-hmm. So, so uh, I've just uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. I've just seen something on the Facebook group. I don't know if this uh, this is correct or true, but um, apparently uh, Test lost so much that they're not providing SRP. Lemayo, how sad! Has Villy really not been losing enough lately, or perhaps he is keeping all that loot for himself? Goons are ready to do it again, but I don't think Test is going to fight like that again. Balls kind of got nipped, so we'll see. That was the hard part about that fight yesterday is like, it was obviously an even trade. And, you know, I really feel like that Testum did not believe that our super fleet is as big as it is. That when we say we had the largest super fleet as an alliance in the game, that we weren't lying. The numbers were even. It was like a difference of like 20 to 30 people when it came to the Titans, which I know that can add up over time, but still like, and that wasn't even our full super fleet. That was not the early morning. That was not the Euros from midday. That was not the Aussies adding in that would have stayed up throughout the whole fight. That started at like five o'clock Eastern, right? So that was end of Euro time. No AUTZ and no China TZ other than the few that maybe got up or stayed up to do it. So listen, if you think... That this super fleets that was the max that is not even close to the maximum we can get to. I know you guys have other numbers too. You can get out there. I feel like that this is the most even fight you're going to have to experience, and you're going to pay for every inch of it if we get the opportunity. Yesterday was a perfect thing. You guys had a jammer, but we were able to get in there ahead of time, and it just it all fell together. Can I ask a question? Um, sure. With the supers and the titans that you guys had on grid yesterday did you plan to bring them or were they like bat phoned in almost like holy so shit, shit. pretty much what happened was when we as far as my understanding as a line member because i can't i can't say anything from a uh, fc perspective as i was not fcing at all at the time so pretty much what happened was we had about uh three or four something keep stars uh coming out uh, of the um, of the the ref within that couple of hours, and we saved one of them. And the the way the it was a short battle, but pretty much we saved it because we distracted Pappy at the Sino Jammer for five taxi, rather than uh, actually uh, fight on the Keep Star for that one. We we fought on their Sino Jammer, forcing them to counter us to the Sino Jammer, and therefore the five taxi Keep Star repaired fully. Um, and then we went into MTech 2 and me as a line member, it was my understanding that, you know, it was going to be a bit of a tougher fight because there were five, 600 people in local, but they were all sub caps. And so I was like, okay, so this is going to be like a 1500 person fight maximum, all sub caps, et cetera, et cetera. And then all of a sudden, uh, test and pandemic cord and whatever 
12 sinos went up uh you know a billion supers started jumping in and i was like time to get my inn cameraman because this looks like it's going to be more than a sub capital fight <laughs> And then uh, after that, it just kind of, they dropped all their shit on their Fortizar, so we started dropping shit on our Keepstar. I wasn't sure if it was pre-planned. I'm not sure if anybody can reveal that information or, or divulge it, but to my understanding as a line member, I was not expecting it to be a capital fight at all, nor was I expecting it to last as long as it did. So if that's the case, and it wasn't planned by the Imperium to have Titans and Capitals there at all, and it, they were just bat phoned in. Now that you guys have got a timer, and it's now going to be planned to bring, you know, Titans and uh, Titans and everything else, then on that, a that, Saturday, on a Saturday, Saturday after a holiday, yeah, and it was just before, like you know, New Year's Eve and everything, and people have got plans and everything else. So if Trappy, I'm definitely going to call them that from this point onwards until they manage to get up, get out of their trap. Um, if they, considering that they had planned to bring all of their capitals and um, titans and everything to the fight. And you guys were able to not just defend against them, but, you know, exchange blows pretty much 50, 50 for the entirety of the, of the match uh, of the fight. Um, if you guys were to actually bring uh, plan to bring your titans for the next one, you could have maybe you know twenty thirty percent even of more titans than you had, maybe even more, maybe even fifty percent more. So at that point, um, you know Trappy is just going to get annihilated because uh, obviously Eve is an N plus one. So, the game, I'm, so I'm actually getting word from from another Imperium member that this started out as Imperium FCs that wanted to mess around and shoot some Sino jammers to literally the fight. it was dave archer and havish having just like let's just shoot some Sino jammers and they refed all of them in in m2 because i think a lot of people were focused on 5 dxc because that is the more strategic keep star of the ones that were refed two of the other ones repaired while fighting over this one you know, if you have an alliance of three times our numbers, you'd think that one fleet could have fucking ref to keep star while we were busy. It is. I, I was told it was Mr. V, Havish, and Dave and the entirety of Welf Squad. So shout out to Welf Squad, man. I mean, y'all poked nice the job. biggest fucking war and the biggest fucking fight in the war. We had half of our Serbs fit uh, Rapid Light. And uh, the reason we did that was to shoot uh, interceptors because they had a lot of interceptors at first. And then it turned out coming in handy for shooting fighters. Well, I know Mifune's got to go pick up his parents because they're getting crunk at a party. So let's do final thoughts real quick. I could keep going for hours, but we'll just save it for next week. So, Jim, uh, I appreciate you coming on first and foremost, and you are welcome back anytime. You've been a delight. So um, unless you do something drastically against me personally or my alliance, so, you know. <laughs> then we might have to talk but no, uh, we're, we're good we're good we're good <laughs> thank you very much for having me it's been an absolute pleasure to be here so uh final thoughts we'll start at the top and work our way down real quick avon any final thoughts or shout outs no i think we pretty much covered it all i mean we had really good times we had really bad times you know i think we okay. covered it all. uh caleb anything that you want to point out or shout out no but let's hope that we can have some eve meets next year I hope so too. Uh, Doxy Poo, anything else? Um, I think I've pretty much said everything I wanted to say. I do love you fighting with, with chat. It's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Greg, anything? Well, just, just again, like the, the culture of, of Goon Swarm and, and how much fun I've had this year, you know, just for the year end stuff and, uh, and just how uh, Theta Thursday has progressed to to be uh an actual good show and i'm glad that we take ourselves so lightly that uh, we don't try to be a a serious uh, matter all type uh, new show or a, a a shitty knockoff of that uh, what's that other tra trailer trash tuesdays or whatever trash talk tuesdays they oh, have you know redline for all his faults is actually a decent person to talk to and hang out with it's just you know he's on the other side so Anyway, I, I'm glad to have you guys as friends. Jim, any final thoughts for the evening? Or any shout-outs so you'd like to give? 
want to say thank you to Greg for inviting me and uh, shout out to all the guys that I work with. I'm not going to say who they are because, you know, OPSEC, but uh, yeah, you guys are doing a fantastic job. Just keep up the good work. You guys know what's coming next next year. We've already discussed uh, the 12th of January. We've got plans, um, but I fully expect with the upcoming uh, changes to a few of the mechanics, there's going to be some holes that we can exploit there as well. And um, yeah, thank you very much for having me on the show. It's been a real pleasure. Mm-hmm. Mufune, any last words, final thoughts? So, uh, my first thing is a shout out to uh, Eric and the rest of the crew that thankfully saved the stream when I got screwed over. Um, so, basically, I know some people have asked in the chat, and I've been waiting to, to pretty much explain uh, how the stream went down was pretty much Eric started streaming on his own personal channel. And the INN moderators used uh, a command within Twitch to force the Imperium News Network channel to uh, raid to stream raid Eric's channel, so that everybody got moved over to his channel automatically, and Imperium News Network was uh, off of my stuff. Uh, and once that happened, they chatted with over a thousand people about the fight after the fight was over, which is still fantastic to the thousand of you that stayed there that amazed me um i apologize shit happens and you get really tired when you have to talk to people for 12 straight hours while also multi-boxing three four two three eve accounts you know in a battle like that for that long amount of time i was very tired i slept straight through my alarm and I woke up at like 9 a.m. And the first thing I went was like, oh, yeah, that was a great power nap. And then I look out my window to my right and it's like light outside. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I ended up running to my PC, hitting the stop stream button on, on my screen to, to stop the stream. Then I made sure all of my ships were still alive, which they were all tethered up and still alive when I logged back in. Thank God. Um, so everything there was all good, but thank you to Eric and all the guys that saved my ass in, in my time of need. Um, the other thing I have right before we go is a yet another propaganda post made by Crya. Uh, oh dear Lord. What did I miss? That's <laughs> This is, uh, this is Cryo's. This is Cryo's thing for uh, when we lit off the DDs yesterday. Ah! Uh, he, they were apparently inspired by my soundboard clip of yesterday's stream where I played the I'm firing a my laser clip on is it stream in the first round. Uh, I, yeah, right? Is it 2007? Um, but this is a, a fantastic piece to end on. Uh, so I and hope then- everybody had. Oh, is there somebody else? Me. Oh, you. I'm sorry. I always say myself for last because A, I'm the most important, and B, you know, it's rude to let other people go first or not go first. So, um, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, my last thought is thank you, Pappy, for the fight yesterday. I am glad that you guys put it out there. We're going to give you some flack, but you know what? You did not have to take the fight, and I thank you for that. So, um, thank you for that. Uh, thank you for Jim and everybody showing up today for our guests that came in and out. Um, you know, when we get too many people in here, I know it's sometimes hard for everybody to get to talk, but, uh, I appreciate everybody that comes in and gives their opinion. And then, uh, I look forward to talking to you guys in the new year. I do too. Happy new year's everybody. Happy new year. I hope everyone year. has a fantastic night. Go out. Don't drink and drive. Please, get an Uber. God, an Uber. Uber is on sale right now nationwide in the United States. You can get an Uber for twelve dollars. Use a freaking Uber. Better stay home. Or, or stay, stay home, home like the rest stay, of us. Stay home, socially distance, be safe. All right, everyone. Good night and have a fantastic New Year. Everybody.